Hi, it's Deneen. Today I'm wearing a t-shirt that was gifted to me. It's um, greetings from Rapture, Indiana. <laughs> and I have my wonderful brother in Christ, uh, Michael Pills, to thank you for this sending me this shirt. Um, his channel, Centurions of Faith, along with his lovely wife, Judy, um, Mama Warrior, and their daughter, Mackenzie. They, um, they are wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ who have been a blessing to me. I, I just truly call them kindred spirits. And I thank you for sending me this t-shirt. I know that he'd put it on his channel, like, what are you gonna be wearing during the eclipse? And so he sent me this shirt because yes, this is what I'll be wearing during the eclipse. And um, I, I just find it just so fascinating and so like amazing, all these um, little things that I've learned about this particular uh, eclipse. I mean, I don't know, are they coinkydinks <laughs> that the eclipse passes through Rapture, Indiana? <laughs> and that, um, oh gosh, we're just thinking about how it's gonna go over seven cities called Nineveh. I mean, that to me is like, I don't know, is it a coinkydink? I even did a, um, you know, a search on that to um, to do a fact check because you know I live in Ohio and I wanted to make sure that there really was a Nineveh, Ohio, and um, and there is, and the, the eclipse is going over that. So I, I did my homework and um, found these things to be true, and uh, I'm relating that to the eclipse that we had seven years ago <laughs> in 2017, and how that eclipse went over seven cities called Salem, which means peace. I mean, it's just as a mind bender to me, these things that I just believe that God is um, truly speaking from the heavens and considering Nineveh. I mean, that, when, when we read the story of Jonah, I mean, I, I recommend you just, just go back to that story. I mean, it's just fascinating how, you know, he was sent to Nineveh and, um, you know, he preached that they needed to repent um, or there, there would be this destruction in like 40 days. And so uh, they did, they, they actually repented and God, you know, refrained from the judgment um, during that time. And uh, I think that this is God's way of just making like a last ditch effort to say, repent, you know, like turn, turn to me. You know, it is not his heart that any should perish, but that all repent and that, we believe in what he's done for us when he sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay off our sin debts. I mean, you have to recognize first that God is holy. He is so set apart from us. He is holy and that we all fall short of his glory. We are all sinners. Every last one of us, we sin and we cannot save ourselves. <laughs> our righteousness is like filthy rags to him. I mean, this was something that I had to learn in my walk and, and my coming to the faith because I was always of the mindset that I was a good person. I, I truly believed. I did not think that I was such a bad sinner, but I had to come and recognize that and humble myself before a holy father and say, yeah, like, there's nothing good in me. I'm a sinner, and I and this is why I need you. You know, this you come to a place where you no longer um, see yourself as good. <laughs> that your that your righteousness comes from Jesus, that is imputed to you by belief, by coming to it by faith, and um, it has just been so amazing because once I believed, I mean, this is when um, God marked me as being righteous. This is when um, I was justified before him because I truly believed it in my heart. I, I come to understand who he truly is and um, how holy he is and how set apart and how sinful I actually am before him. And all along, I was like Cain, trying to bring my own good works to him, the, the fruits of my own labor. And that is not what he, he desires, you know? Abel had the better sacrifice. He brought the blood. Jesus shed his blood so that we can be forgiven. And when you truly believe that and, and you are now justified, you know, 
I, I learned a few things about justification that are just really kind of cool. That justification, you are declared righteous. And that you don't make yourself righteous. Only God can do that. Only God can justify you before him. And then once you are, then you go through sanctification. And in this is a process where you're being made righteous. You, that you're working with the Holy Spirit that you've been gifted with to overcome because the sin in your life, you're powerless against it without the Holy Spirit. And um, that you work together with God on. It's, it's, um, it's a working with you and God on the, on the sanctification walk. And that um, eventually, you know, which hasn't happened yet, we'll, we'll be glorified. And in that, we will have completely overcome and been ridden of all the sin and this is um, what, what excites many of the believers out there because you know once you are saved we truly are like justified and walking in the spirit being sanctified this is what, what we're looking forward to because you something changes in your heart that you no longer desire the things of the world and the things that um that come against god you know, all those adversities that are being discovered within yourself that you repent, you change your mind on, you no longer want to do. I mean, there's just so many of them in my own my own walk. Um, where it's like, there was a time where I used to go out after work, you know, drinking in bars and stuff. And that is just completely, you know, stripped from me. Like I no longer desire to do those things. And, um, and I thank you, Jesus. I thank the Holy Spirit for, you know, helping me to, to overcome like those situations. And, uh, the, my acknowledgement of who God is, and now I see the love and what he did when he shed his blood, because he did that while we were still sinners, you know, like he, could have just said, you know what, <laughs> I created that world and, you know, they are just so dreadful. I'm going to just wipe them all off the map and just maybe start over. But he didn't. He loved us enough to want to give us a second chance to come to him. And so it, it causes you to to want to strive to do better. It it, it brings about a change in you. you know? <laughs> so it is um, the evidence of your faith. You know, you don't work to be saved. You work because you're saved. And um, that was a big lesson that I had to learn as I came out of all the religious doctrines that, you know, I once followed and truly understanding who Jesus is and his great love and his mercy and his kindness towards us that he'd be willing to, to self-sacrifice and um, and to die mis a miserable death on a cross. But you know, it doesn't end there because he was raised on the third day to new life. He was the first fruits. And so we have this hope that we too, you know, are going to have this eternal life with him, you know, that we'll drink from the fountains of living water. I mean, it's just so amazing when you come to understand these things. And uh, we have to continually, you know, renew our minds by just staying in the word and, and reading scripture and memorizing it. And, and um, it just, it really it just helps you to stay grounded in your faith. And so I just want to encourage you, family. Like, we need to be sharing the gospel because the, God is giving us warnings, I think. You know, he, he, he wants all to come to repentance and to believe and to trust in him and, and, and what he had done through Jesus. And so that's why I'm prompted <clears throat> to make this video. And um, also, like I had had somebody leave a comment on my channel, one of my last videos where I said that there was nothing left in this world for me. And they, and they seemed to be confused like about that. So I just want to, I want to make it clear that um, I marvel at what God created. I, you know, when I look at what God created, it astonishes me and then I see like every little flower and petal like I see every blade of grass I see the mountains and I see just his handiwork I and I just am in awe of it I look at myself I look at humanity I see 
how we are fearfully and wonderfully made, like right down to every little cell and how everything works together in our bodies. It just, and just that the whole process of birth. <laughs> I mean, I've got, I have two children. I've been through, you know, pregnancy twice and give birth. And um, every time I see like a pregnant woman's belly, it's like, I wish I had x-ray vision. I could see inside there and see that child in that womb. I mean, believe me, I love what God has created. It's the world that doesn't have anything for me. And this is where I want to prove my point. First John, um, <clears throat> chapter one, verse 15. It says, do not love the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This is Satan's playground. This world that he has ensnared into the traps of his deceptions. That is what no longer has, there's nothing for me in it. Like, I, I want nothing to do with the evil in this world. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life and all those things that I once was partaking in. <laughs> that that was before my eyes were open to these spiritual things. You know, I um, I lusted in the flesh. You know, my, my carnality, I was puffed up in a lot of pride thinking that I was good enough to stand before a holy God right there. That alone it shows the amount of pride that I had. But yeah, like those things now, and I, I no longer desire to go drinking in bars and, you know, I no longer desire to um, <laughs> wear scandalous clothing and, and be out there as a fornicator, you know, ha having relationships with people outside of marriage. And it, I look back and I'm just ashamed of myself for the, the way I once lived and thought I was still good enough to stand before only God. <laughs> I mean, it's laughable now because I see, you know, things so differently when I'm, when I'm walking in the spirit. And so these are the things that I want to encourage people that um, God loves you so much. He, and he does not want for you to perish. So, you know, I just beg you to, to please just believe in your heart like that that he is real and and that he is faithful and that he will give you his spirit and that you can overcome these things in in this world by his power by his strength because you're you're, you're just you're powerless to do it on your own. We, you truly need the Spirit of God working through you. And, you know, it, it won't be perfect because we're not perfect yet. We are not glorified. But anytime I mess up, you know, I'm quick to bring it to him and in and, and, and prayer and talk about it with him. And um, and I know that I'm forgiven and I have that confidence. And I, and I just am looking forward to his return like like none other because you see the world is just... It is just falling apart. People, like, wake up. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's, there's just so many things. It is so many things just adding up. And it's all pointing to the return of Jesus Christ. And so, this is why I do this. I'm, 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 I'm hoping I can wake some people up. <laughs> and, um, and just share, share the love, you know. Just shine bright out in the dark world. <clears throat> And, um, and to be you know, a, a, an ambassador for what Jesus stood for when, when he walked the world. When, you know, like to love and serve others. And, and this is why, you know, like I, I, I no longer want to run with the circles that I once ran with. But I'd rather run with the circle of Christians that um, I now call brothers and sisters. You know, like, like the Pels, <laughs> Michael and Judy, like... And I see what they're doing out in the community to make a difference, and it inspires me. Like, I I want to love and serve others. And so I just hope I can encourage you that way and um, hope that you can just really turn to Jesus and um, make that profession of faith and, and, and mean it. Like, we, we have to recognize 
the proper identification of, of who Jesus is. And Jesus is God. <laughs> and um, my understanding of that was very skewed when I was lost and ensnared and entrapped in, in Satan's world. <clears throat> Just believing, <clears throat> had a confusion over it. And people telling you like he's he was like a very righteous man or he, he was a prophet or, you know, like saying that he's not the son of God or whatever. And it was like, no, you have to like cement that in your heart. Jesus is God. And um, I'm going to bring up another scripture real quick before I close out. <laughs> and Paul, if you are watching this video, this one's for you. This is the scripture that I sent to you. I gave you homework to read. It's in Colossians um, chapter 1. And verse 15, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things are created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. He is the image of the invisible God. So God is spirit. And so I had a hard time <laughs> wrapping my mind around spirit, you know, like, because you can't, in our carnal minds, we, we can't see spirit, but we have the image of Jesus, you know. So it's like, this holy transcendent God who is like I used to always think of as just like far off is now near because when I'm praying I'm, I'm sitting with Jesus I, I literally picture him there with me holding my hand and talking to me like he is the image of the invisible God he is God so we have to make that proper identification and um, it, it becomes more real to you in that sense so <laughs> Anyways, just wanted to say that. I, I don't want to keep this video long or anything, but um, I just want to extend my love to all as always, you know, that the Lord had given me a heart to love and serve. And this is why I'm doing this. All right. Until next time. Maranatha.